Hello and welcome to Teacher Needs a Drink podcast. I am Elvis, your host, and I'm here to let you know that this is a not safe for work podcast. We are teachers at the end of the week and really the end of our ropes, and we'd like to be able to talk honestly and openly about our jobs without, you know, having to worry about losing them. So we'll be using pseudonyms throughout the podcast, hence the Elvis. Now I'd like to let you know this is a very special 100th episode. We recorded this live with a bunch of our patrons listening in, and we had all the hosts present who I could get a hold of. And we had a great time. I cut this down from about an hour, 10 minutes, hour 15, down to this little 28 minutes episode that you have right here. So if you like this episode and want to hear more, join our Patreon because we have the whole unedited, complete podcast, all the conversations, all the cut stuff right there for anyone who wants to listen. For as little as 5 to $10 a month, you can support Teacher Needs a Drink podcast on Patreon and keep us going. And I'd like to give a big thank you to all the patrons we have out there right now. Let's get started. Here we go. Melissa V, Steph, Science Teach 17, Michael M, Kim C, William P, Sarah O, Aldrich T, La Scorpionita, Britt M, Tisha C, Teresa H, Biker Teach, Caitlin L, Marsha M, Weaza, Christina B, Miss Alabama, Kristen B, Megan R, Huvian, Ashley M, Jess, Jason F, Amber H, JJ O, Jeff S, Abby B, Ann T, Sarah B, Regina F, Anna L, Josie S, Sam B, Lucy P, Mary E, Jamie B, Hope H, Aaron D, Christine W, Vanessa J, Mary C, Rylan L, Catherine S, RJ R, Kristen C, Johanna H, Tony, Christina K, Irma A, Nimi, Melissa M, Lisa S, and Sarah N. Woo! Thank all of you guys so much for supporting us. We love you and enjoy our 100th episode. If you have something you'd like to share with us, hit us up to the contact page of Teacher Needs a Drink Podcast. Here we go, episode 100! Oh, Yay. We are Yay. all here. I'm a dork. Okay. I'm okay. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I didn't get roll call. I'm sorry. Oh, <gasps> can't do this How it, could it, you? All right. Last so here not we go. Late. That's fine. It's fine. Oh, and who's here? It's Miss Zola no. Zanzibar, social media. Oh, my God. Oh, here. Oh, 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 well, welcome to Teacher Needs a Drink <laughs> podcast special 100th episode live spectacular. Yay. Yay. I am so happy all of you here. And so I'm doing a quick roll up. Ms. Zola, it's so wonderful to have you here. It's wonderful to be here. I'm sorry I was muted, but I love you. <laughs> and and Ms. Money O'Hare, it's so great to hear from you. It is good to be back. Woohoo! It's been a little bit. Mr. Count Chocolate, I'm so glad you're here. Yo, this is the, the Wilt Chamberlain 100, baby. I'm excited. <laughs> we got notches in our bedpost. Miss Lucille Ooh. Lane, I'm so glad you made it too. <laughs> Yay, I'm so glad to be here. Back. Back at it, 100. <laughs> Miss Rosie Rose is here as well. Hi, I keep muting She's- myself because my dog is barking, but hello. Oh, and we also have Mr. Turd Ferguson. A hundred flushes, baby. <laughs> <laughs> We've made it. You've been here since the beginning, along with Miss uh, Bunny O'Hare. And last but not least, we have Miss Shirley Temper. Big mistake. Big. Huge. I have to go shopping now. Well, guys, I am so excited and elated that we have made it this far, that we have people that want to listen to us, that we have a hundred episodes. This is just kind of crazy and blows me away. So I'm lifting my glass right now and i hope you guys at home cheers i'm glad we've made it this far yeah oh i'm so glad but my god is this not the most fucked up year ever i think we started this podcast at just the right time where the world was semi-normal and then it just went off the rails and we've been kind of podcasting the whole time and this year is nuttier than ever but I, I do want to go through normally, and I'd check in with each one of you, but we have like 10 of us here, and so that's not going to happen for right now. And so I'm going <laughs> to dive into an article, and we're going to talk about that, and I'll give you guys a chance to like jump in. So today's article is, a Wisconsin school district says students become spoiled with free meals and opt out of the Biden National School lunch pro- free lunch program. Fuck this. Fuck yeah, your mother. Talk. Okay. Whew. I got this. The drink hasn't kicked in too hard yet. Mm. A federally funded U.S. Department of Agriculture program that was launched in April gives free meals to all kinder through 12th grade students regardless of income. But students who are in the Waukesha School District won't get to participate in that program as it is the only district in Wisconsin to opt out of it. The reason for opting out was that families could become spoiled. 
Milwaukee's NPR station first reported last week that the Washigan School District voted to forego the pandemic free meal program. While many lawmakers and advocates say this is necessary to help prevent child hunger during the pandemic, the district board members opposed the program and said families that could afford to feed their children should just do it. I had three kids. I had them, and so I'm going to feed them. I feel like that's the responsibility of an adult, said asshole Karen Rajanek, a board member. <laughs> I feel like this is a big problem, and it's really easy to get sucked into and become spoiled and think it's not my problem anymore. It's everyone else's problem to feed my children. Instead of allowing any student to qualify for free meals – free school meals, Waukesha voted to return to the National School Lunch Program, which requires families to fill out an application to qualify. So my question is, why do they feel that kids don't deserve free food when they don't? I mean, do they think people are just not going to eat? Or It's because they white, Elvis. It's because they white. Oh. I mean, it's Wisconsin, so the odds she not, are in she that not wrong. She's not wrong. She's not wrong. Oh. Now we're about white. Because bootstraps or something. (laughs) Thank you. (laughs) They've never been hungry and not able to afford stuff. Or, yeah, you could afford food, but it would be a lot easier if you didn't have to worry about that extra, what, 20 bucks a week for school lunches? I mean, if they're on free and reduced, it's 145 or 245 or something like that. It did raise this year. Yeah, that's why it's Mm -hmm. more because it used to be 40 cents and like 80 cents. But so if you're struggling that much and you need like if they need that fifteen dollars a week, let them have it. If that's what's the difference in keeping like their power on or their internet, I mean, fuck that. Why why if you can't make people's lives a little bit easier, would you opt just to be a dick and say, Hey, suck it up? I, I don't get it. Because this. they're Republicans. No. Well, there, yeah. What's even worse is there's actual studies on if you reduce childhood hunger, it's a reduction in like crime rates and all these other like social issues because a lot of those lead to childhood hunger. Childhood hunger leads to a lot of these things. Like <laughs> there's a lot of problems that could be solved. It's just fucking feed kids. If, if, yeah. if they're not getting it at home, just feed them. What is it? Just Amen, girl. Amen. Yeah. Like how how selfish do you have to be to willingly let children go hungry? Like how damn selfish. And like I mean, as teachers we talk about this all the time, like Maslow before Bloom, kids are not going yeah. to learn. You're gonna see test scores drop, you're gonna see higher rates of absenteeism. Like it's not going to help. Cause some of these kids Like, I teach in a low-income school, and some of these kids come to school because they get fed. Yes. And Uh that is the meal that they get during the day. The meal, singular, that they will get in 24 hours. We got that. I think I mean, that my, if you have a problem with feeding kids, that you are a shitty fucking person and you should just, you know, abort yourself, do the world a favor, but just not abort yourself in Texas because it's after six weeks. So oh, I think you should just man, jump off a bridge. Uh, this is just absurd. Like, and, and, you know, yes, white people for sure. Like, there is no other there is no other reason for it. It's just ridiculous. And I, I, I mean, I I'm at a point where I just like stare blankly in front of me just because I'm just like, yeah, this is normal now. This is like another one, another one, another stupid thing. Yeah. I love Lucille and she gets me deep in my soul. (laughs) See, I'm starting to think that the school board meetings are starting to be a little bit more entertaining than fucking television, or at least a little bit more controversial. Just saying. That is so true. (laughs) Well, y'all, y'all, you know that, okay, there, there's been a movement in very conservative right wing circles to take over school boards and fuck things up so that schools have to become privatized. Like, you know, that's a thing, right? Yeah. What? That's real. That is yeah. A that's what? a real thing. That's, that's very, we are very seeing that in, we are seeing that in my area. There is another local school district that has been known for having a really functional, like solid school board. And some new guy got elected and it, he's already starting to fuck shit up. Yeah, they're doing it on purpose because the whole point and the 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 I'm just going to say it. The Republican Party has had this in their plans for decades now, decades. like since I was a child in school. And it has been 
part of their purpose is to privatize schools because so many of them want to go back to segregated schools. Yep. Yep. Because God forbid your child grow up in a diverse environment. I just oh saw God. a documentary on it. Like I, it wasn't even that long ago. I saw a documentary yeah. of, like about that. Yeah. Like this is not a conspiracy theory. This is documented. This has been written down. This has been part of their plan for decades now. And unfortunately they're getting better and better at creating culture war Chaos. bullshit that gets people to continue to vote for them. Look at the look at the sudden rash of legislation about yes. critical race theory, right? Uh-huh, uh-huh. Every year, every red state has the same bullshit that they go after. It's trans students in bathrooms, and now it's critical race theory, and it's this and it's that, and it's always some random nonsense that they pull out of their stupid, tight, white asses. <laughs> All right. This is from Reddit user Unconfuse Your Brain 11, titled, They Are Trying to Force Me to Make a Rap Music Video for Parents. I teach fourth grade. This year, someone at my school had the idea that each grade level record a rap music video, introducing the teachers and important info parents would need to know. Homework policy, arrival and dismissal procedure, daily schedule, etc. I'm sorry, but... No. I feel like extroverted over-the-top teachers often end up making decisions for the whole staff and totally disregarding that other people have different personality types. Then they act like you're a jerk for spoiling it for everybody if you don't want to do whatever dumb idea they came up with. I say, no. You cannot be forced to make a ridiculous rap video for your school. Make me, bitch. Awkward. Okay, to quote to quote Ron Swanson, I know what I'm about, son. <laughs> I'm a five-foot-three white girl. Like, me trying to do a rap video, I'm going to look real stupid. I would pay money to watch you do I, that. Wait, you're from the Like, it's not going to go well. And can we also talk about cultural appropriation? Aww. And, like, I don't know. Let people do their thing. Like, if you want to have people do a lip sync to some genre of music video or something, or I don't know, but the whole thing just seems like you trying too hard. My view is whoever comes up with the idea is the one who needs to do it. So yeah. if you have like a second grade team where they're like, Hey, we think it would really be great if we got all the guys on campus to do this. I'd say, no, this is your idea. This is your project. Do something else. You don't need me. Cause we've got too much shit on our plate to have other people volunteering us for something. Cause they think it might be cute. Fuck that. Ain't no way I'm making a rap video, y'all. <laughs> like, but I can see you as being a guy who stands out because you're just a tall, bulky, health. Like, everyone loves seeing your face. He's black. One of the three questions I get at, well, three questions I get asked the most as an educator is, one, do you play basketball? No. <laughs> two, can you rap? <laughs> like, it's always one of the first two ones. And while I can, ain't no, no, I'm not going to, no. Just no, just fucking make a, a, a PowerPoint <laughs> or a Google slide yep. and be be as basic as possible. Add a couple animations and a little bit of graphics and some, some music or something. Uh, as a black a- person who cannot rap, um, I'm not doing your stupid rap video for school. It's bullshit. It's just not. Like, no one's going to fully appreciate it the way I it should be know. appreciated I either. Think, I think... <laughs> I think- uh, Rosie Rose and myself uh, should make one, and it'll look like Dwight and Michael. Oh like, is this a pause? That would be wonderful. <laughs> Do you know what's here. super interesting, Count? You, the first two questions or the first two things people say to you when they find out you're an educator about basketball and and rapping. Um, but this, <laughs> the the number one thing that happens to me is older men are like teach your sure didn't look like you when I was in school. Mm-hmm. And then oh, I you and then I want to throw myself in traffic. I'm not kidding. Every almost every single time. Oh my a gosh, variation so, of that. Yeah. I'm so sorry for my gender. <laughs> you know what? Moms can be creepy and handsy too. It happens. Ew. No, no, no. There are there are some moms up there who think they like this, yeah. They don't get to see that many men outside of their little tiny bubble. 
Are you so kind of do, confessing something? They either make inappropriate comments or get lots of invites. Like Humble brag. He one percent is Humble brag. <laughs> yeah, it's not happening anymore. But there was a fair somebody come like, I bet you get lots of dates. I bet you never have to sit at the bar alone. Slap I bet it's like you guys are saying weird <laughs> shit. Slap on the ass. They're like, what are you doing for Halloween? <laughs> I'm going to be Elvis. Is it the tight jumpsuit? Really? <laughs> yeah, you're my boss. And I can verify it's not just him, but yes. <laughs> <laughs> Turn gets it too. Getting getting slightly back on track. What? Oh, thank you, thank you. Um, oh, sorry. <laughs> I was I read something just the other day about how there's always these articles about how people who are more introverted can learn to be more outgoing and can learn to be more social or effusive or whatever you want to call it. But we very rarely see articles aimed at extroverts about how to tone it down and cool off sometimes to make like it's always about introverts changing themselves to make extroverts more comfortable. But we never see articles or instructions about the other way around. All right, Rosie, take off. All right, this is from user Afro Doom. It's Club Rush Day, one of the most popular clubs this round, Lettuce Club. Yes, you read that correctly, Lettuce Club. If you're anything like me, you may be wondering what in the actual fork is Lettuce Club. I asked one of my AP students, and this is what they said. They'll get together once a month for the competition, a race to see who can eat a full head of lettuce the fastest, (laughs) and the one who can will be crowned the lettuce king or queen. (laughs) Current roster of this club is just shy of 150 kids from a high school of roughly 2,000. I'm just sitting here thinking, what? That is uh, beautiful. I love God, it. I just love high schoolers, man. <laughs> God, you are so creative. I love high schoolers. Okay, but what kind of lettuce? Like, do they get iceberg. to choose? No, it's got to be iceberg. It's got to be iceberg. That's the cheapest, and that's like, you got to peel Mostly it water. I told, I, I'm down with our van. I, I want to sponsor this club. Same. I think it, mm-hmm. it costs, you know, 40 cents a week to join, and you can get sponsored because, man, buying that much lettuce. If you have 150 heads of lettuce, yeah. I mean, that's a special order from the grocery store. But yeah, could you imagine have to, like, the amazing T-shirts that could come out of this group? All of the lettuce puns. I'm so excited. I'm doing it. <laughs> I would say let us pray. See? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Two observations. Two observations. Number one, you know those kids are pooping like rock stars. Number, <laughs> number two, I had a kid who thought it'd be funny to eat a ghost pepper during oh, lunch one day <laughs> and he threw up in the cafeteria in front oh, of everybody and when i saw him two hours later he was still sweating <laughs> did he go to the nurse no <sighs> this fucker seriously I, I i but the fiber thing that made me think like okay that's health related it's sort of healthy i'm in i <laughs> sponsor that club honestly I, these kids like are not on the streets they're eating lettuce Heads of lettuce, 150 or so of them. And they want to be the king or queen. Like, come on. Let them be that. I I need that title. I think this is just the kind of goofy, dumb fun that kids really need, especially in bullshit times. I love it. Because high schoolers are kind of like nihilist anyway. I mean, that's their favorite sense of humor is just shit that doesn't make sense or it's random. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's what those would make the best inside jokes and all the random shit. And that's like pretty much every TikTok that kids like today is just some really weird and random. They need this kind of nihilism. They need this kind of chaos in their lives because it doesn't make sense to the point that it's just funny and enjoyable. And it's lettuce. There's like no calories to it. I'm like, hey guys, guess what? 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 We have a Patreon. Oh God! <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah, what? we do. OnlyFans oh, yeah. is back. OnlyFans is. <laughs> yeah, it is. See all of our feet in glorious high def detail. But no, we have our own Patreon, and those who are listening live right now, because we got like three or four. Let's say there's like 80 of you guys listening live. I mean, that's what the number on the left says, totally. And we're so happy you guys are all here, and you guys can do special things like that. Plus, you get bonus episodes, you get access to the host, you get our Facebook group. It is amazing. So uh, join it now! Woohoo! Woo! Hey! Woo! Join it now. This is from Dirty Hippie Feet Teacher. 
Great name, by the way. I was told a week and a half after the first day of school that I'm being moved from fourth grade to a three, four split class. That's weird. Uh, I have already started forming relationships. I'm keeping eight of the students I have now, getting two different fourth graders and then 10 third graders. But this may change tomorrow. Also weird. Um, I'm overwhelmed on several levels. I am mourning and having a feeling of strong loss for some of the students that will be leaving my classroom. I have already begun building good relationships with my students. I'm completely baffled on how to teach the math curriculum we have for third and fourth grade. Yeah. Uh, I'm stuck on how to catch up my new students on our writing and reading notebook reading mini lessons I've already taught. I'm fearful I will not be able to live up to the expectations of my admin, whom I love, or the parents that have had their students in my class in the past. I'm terrified my current students will feel like I've lied to them, handpicked favorites, when really I had no say in what students move or not. This is the best class I've had in all the years I've been teaching. I pride myself in two things as a teacher, being honest with my students as much as possible and treating my students how I would want to be treated. I feel like I've lied to them every day I have known about this switch happening. Oh, Aww. I suffer from anxiety almost every day since I was informed of what students were being moved and what students were not being moved. I've had many panic attacks and been on the verge of tears almost every day. Oh, no. Your podcast has gotten me through some really hard teaching days, and I really like hearing your host's thoughts on situations. I would like to hear your thoughts on my situation. Thank you for all that you do. Your situation is bullshit. Your admin sucks. Yeah, that, yeah, that's kind of the long and short of it, but it sucks. Everyone always wants to have that dream class, and you finally have your dream class, and it got ripped from you. That is such, such bullshit. I am so sorry to hear that. that but if anxiety is a thing, I can't recommend enough anxiety medication. It is a, a lifesaver at times. And there are some you can take occasionally. There's some that you can have as part of your thing. So talk to your healthcare professional. Let them know, hey, I am living in a state of stress and I'm not eating well or I'm not sleeping well. And they can actually help you out or at least tell you some options. So like take care of yourself. Go see a doctor if it really is bad. Or if like it's more than like three days in a row where you're just like can't think or you have so much anxiety, go see a doctor like right then. Don't yes. wait weeks and weeks or months and months. Just think it'll go away. No, get help. It makes your life Amen. so much better. Yeah, mm -hmm. it really does. I waited too long last school year, and I basically had a nervous breakdown in March. And now I'm on Zoloft. Simbalta. No, I'm on Triventa. It's a new one. Prozac. I really Ooh. Oh, I also take a beta blocker. I take Zoloft and a beta blocker, which are supposed you to be good. You take Propanolol? Yes, Propanolol. Yeah. So would you rather... Get robbed at gunpoint 5% of the time when you leave your house after dark or scream racial slurs and obscenities every time you eat something that tastes good. <laughs> That's, not <right. laughs> That's not right at all. Oh, no. Because, <laughs> you know, one is like terrifying and the other one. Get, like you're like <laughs> I'm getting as, robbed. As I'm guy, getting robbed. The racial thing. I, I only have to eat shitty food, or my <laughs> ass would just be beaten all the time. Yeah, no, I, I'm I'm gonna go for the getting robbed at gunpoint five percent. Those odds aren't bad. I'm getting robbed. <laughs> So Care Bear says she'd rather get robbed 5% of the time. WP Dramaturg, he also wanted to be robbed. What about you, Shirley Temper? Um, if I could only yell racial epitaphs about white people, I would do that. Other than that, I would get robbed. I mean, I'm kind of with Shirley on this one, but I'm also going to ask the question of, can I eat the really good phone or good food by myself? Well, yeah, because no one's going to hear you screaming your racial shit. I mean, you can just be like your normal, like, turd, da 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 da, Jews control everything, da 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 da. <laughs> and we just be like, what the hell, turd? <laughs> like, stop it, man. I thought you were in the other room, and this meat looks amazing. I'm, I'm getting robbed. <laughs> <laughs> now, Mama Chicken says she'd rather be robbed. All right, uh, Miss Rosie Rose, where are you going with this? All right, so I had some time to think. Oh God. And it said 5% of the time when you go outside at night. So I could never go outside at night. And 5% really isn't a lot. And now that we live in, you know, a permitless carry state, oh I could just always be packing. And so when I get robbed, I'm like, oh, really, motherfucker? And like pointed at him, you know? Yeah, yeah. You know. I'd be scared. So I'm going to go with robbed. 
There's some poor delivery kid who's just going to walk behind you on the wrong day and just get popped. Poor I didn't say I was kid. going to shoot him. I just said I'm going to point it. I thought you said <laughs> you're going to point pop it. it. And I was like, oh. No, point it. Ms. Bunny, it be. How, how are you feeling about all this? I think for reasons that have already been expressed, um, I would probably go with the getting robbed thing and just not go outside at night. Count Chocolate, what about you? Oh, man. Yeah, <laughs> I... Oh, please do it. Please. I, I got to go with getting robbed. I just. Oh, I thought you were going to be Mr. Tourette's. Yeah. Well, see, okay, you know what? I thought about that. What if I just tell people, like, as soon as I do it, just like, oh, sorry, that's that's just what I do. <laughs> I do have a student that has a similar type condition where they blurt out all kinds of things. Oh, my God. I love um, that. It is like something happened last year that I think it was something traumatic, and now that's what she does. Aww. But, uh,. I, I just, but the, the, the trauma of, oh, fuck, like of of being robbed at gunpoint, what was it, 5% of the time? Yeah, one out of every 20 One out of every 20, by. oh, my gosh. And I step out at night, too. Like, I, uh, no, You could get away, no, though, with the racial commentary when you eat good food. Mm-hmm. You'd be fine. Okay, that's true. Yeah. That's true. All right, Lucille Lane, which one would you go with? Well, I mean, yeah, don't go out at night, but, like, I don't know. It sounds to me when you say every time you go out, am I running that risk of fiber? But but it wouldn't make sense. So if I'm doing this multiple times, I will never die. I will just get robbed. So like you only keep a few bucks in your pocket and they feel stupid when you're handing them like three dollars and like some change. All right, my friends, thanks for joining us for another episode of Teacher Needs a Drink Podcast, our 100th episode by oh, Spencer. Oh, oh. 100, 100, 100. Oh, Keeping it 100. I'm so happy we made it here. And, uh, who knows? Maybe we'll make 100 more. I'd like to thank Whoa. all of my hosts who have contributed and been here. Mrs. Sparkles, thanks for being here tonight. Thanks for having me. Bye, y'all. Bye. And Miss Lucille Lane, it was great. I got to hear you in the end. Oh. That made it so much worth it. I know. It is. Um, thank you for having me. 100. <laughs> wow. This is this is a big deal. It's a big deal. We're fancy pants now. And fancy Mr. Turd Ferguson, it was great for hearing from you as well. Yes, it's lovely to still keep flushing. And also, Miss Bunny O'Hare, you have it pocket. You still have Bunny Foo Foo hiding. I, I still am. The, the Foo Foo is still baking. Yeah. Um, oh. Less than less than two weeks to due date. So. Woo-hoo! Yay! I'm so excited. No, but if I if I don't get to come back, um, I love all of you and thank you. Well, I mean, like I'm going to come back eventually, but it may be. <laughs> <laughs> like, Damn! Uh, what the like, fuck? That got dark. Shit got, got dark. Yeah. What a good no, guy. But, like, if this is if this happens to be my last recording for a while, then I I love all of you and thank you, Elvis, for having me back again and again. And um, Fufu looks forward to meeting all of you. Yay! Yay! Oh, even me? Yeah. Oh my God, I'm going to hug the shit out of that baby. Also, I want to thank Miss Rosie Rosé. <laughs> Yay, thank me. <laughs> also, i like to thank Count Chocolate. I'm glad I can actually count to 100, guys. And I'm glad <laughs> to be a part of this. This was great. And you can <laughs> thank, thank you. the teacher for that. Dirty and last man. but not least, Shirley Temper. I'm going to treat you so nice, baby. You're never going to let me go. Oh, it's true. Uh, All right, my friends, this has been lots of fun. Deep breaths, deep drinks. Cheers! Cheers! Cheers, everybody! All right, my friends, thanks for joining us for the 100th episode of Teacher Needs a Drink podcast. This was a little under 28 minutes. However, if you want to listen to the full hour-long and 10-minute recording section, there's about, I don't know, four or five different sections that I left out that are only available on the Patreon, so you can go hear them there. I thank all of my hosts who are with me today, Ms. Zola Zanzibar, Ms. Shirley Temper, Ms. Rosie Rosé, Ms. Bunny O'Hare, Ms. Lucy Lane, Mr. Turd Ferguson, Mr. Count Chocolate, and my God, I hope I'm not forgetting anyone. That felt like the right amount of people. But I am so grateful and thankful for the whole team and all of you that have made it to 100 episodes. And I'd like to give a big shout out to all our patrons 
patrons who help keep making this possible, as well as Lud Lamb Dramatics and Legendary Pretzels. And a big, big, big thank you to everyone. I'm sure I left someone out. If you have something you'd like to share with us here at Teacher Needs Drink Podcast, go ahead and hit us up through the contact page of our website. And also, we come out every Wednesday. I think that's about everything. If you can and you like us, go ahead and leave a review. If you don't like us, then fuck off and quit listening. All right, my friends, I love you so much. Thank you for sticking around for our 100th episode. And cheers! Woo! Did you just text it to me? Yeah, I did. Okay. Are you in the elevator with like your dogs? Yeah, give me one second. I'm almost <laughs> on the, I'm almost in the lobby. Oh, no. All right. <laughs> Damn it, woman. Well, I th- she has to pee. <laughs> I can't help it. They have no, bodily functions you. too. <laughs> okay? She's just a dog. She doesn't no, know any better. No, anyway, okay. I'm going to uh, start. Okay. God. <laughs> <laughs> the elevator dinging in the. <laughs> Look, you're all down. in. You're all right. Ooh, going down. A. Hey. <laughs>